Hi guys, I have a really exciting video today because it's fall time, spooky season, cold weather, all the best things. Oh, I love fall, everybody loves fall, we know. Okay, so today's video is the finally fall tag, which is exciting because it's not really finally fall, but it will be soon. And we've all been eating and drinking pumpkin things for like weeks now, so... Let's just apply that to every area of our life and be happy. So this tag is all about books and fall time and coziness and all those things. It's been a while since I filmed a book video, so I am struggling to use words. The first question is, in fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. So the reason I chose this book is mostly because I want to talk about this book. It does have a vivid setting, but I just want somebody, somebody to tell me that they've read it too, please. And just let's mourn together because this book was so good, but so sad. So it's called A Good Neighborhood by Therese, what is it? Therese Ann Fowler? Mm -hmm. So it's called A Good Neighborhood by Therese Ann Fowler. And oh my goodness, it was heavy, very, very heavy but it was very politically relevant. And so you can see how this has almost nothing to do with the setting of the book. So the reason that it does have a very specific setting is because it, like almost one of the characters in the book is the neighborhood and the area in between these two people's houses, their backyards. So it's not necessarily a super vivid setting, but I chose it because number one, I wanna talk about it. But number two, the setting is almost a character in the book. It plays a factor in all the events that transpire. And it is seriously, I think, one of the best books I've read this year, if not ever. So please, I am begging you, if you have read this book, tell me. I need somebody to talk to it about. I need somebody to walk me through what happened. It was intense, but it was so good. I really recommend you read it. Number two is Nature is Beautiful but Also Dying. Sad. Name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. So for this one, I chose We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, which is one of the, my favorite books that has the best writing. That's what I like about this book. I like the plot, obviously. But if you've read this book, then you know what I I'm talking about. It's very vivid imagery and very beautifully written, um, but it also is very heavy. It deals with loss and grief <laughs> so it's the perfect answer to this question but um that's kind of more of a summer book in my opinion uh, because it takes place in the summer and around water and sunshine so i also chose station 11 by emily st john mandel which is my favorite book of all time because if you've read that then you also know very beautifully written but um deals with a pandemic <laughs> so maybe don't read that right now <laughs> it's a little scary but there's also very some heavy topics and themes in that book. Number three says, fall is back to school season for some of us, but not for all of us. You don't have to go to school, <laughs> kids. But the question is, fall is back to school season. Name a nonfiction book that taught you something. So I looked back through all the books I've read this year, and I don't think I've read a nonfiction book this year. Insert cheering noise. Yay! <laughs> Yay me, I'm terrible. I don't read a lot of nonfiction. I just don't get any enjoyment out of it usually, unless it's like a celebrity biography, which really shows you the depth of my intelligence. <laughs> Love a celebrity biography. But for this one, I chose Hillbilly Elegy because it was a... Uh, a nonfiction book that I really enjoyed and was really fascinating and interesting because I've grown up in Kentucky, lived here my whole life, and it talks a lot about the um, challenges that people in this area face based on the geography. So based on where they're born, the culture that they're born into, the traditions and lifestyle, how that sets you up for the rest of your life. So very interesting book. Um, I don't read a lot of nonfiction and I don't regret that. The next question says, in fall, in order to keep warm, we have to spend time with the people we love. So name a fictional friend group, family, household that you'd like to be a part of. So the um, cliche answer would be the Weasleys from Harry Potter, which I chose that because duh, we'd all like to be a part of that. I mean, who doesn't want in on that? 
But my other answer is the group from the Royal We, which is like Freddie. Oh my gosh, I forgot their names. Freddie, Nick, and Beck. So they have like their little trio. And I actually just reread those books, so that's why it's on my mind. But their their little friendship, their little group is so sweet and like them against the world. And I really like that. And I would want to be a part of their friend group and I also want to be royal. Mm. So that's why I would choose them. So the next question says, fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. I don't think anybody actually does that. <laughs> if you actually tell stories by a fire, that's cool because that's not a thing. But the question is, name a book where somebody is telling a story. So I chose Sadie by Courtney Summers, which is um, a double win because somebody's telling a story in it. It's about a woman. Is it a woman? It's been a long time since I read this book. I think it is. Someone who is doing a podcast telling the story of this girl who has gone missing. But it's also spooky. It's like a thriller. So it's really good to read this time of year. It's super fast paced because it's told kind of podcast style. But um, it's captivating, suspenseful, all the good things that make a thriller entertaining. So I really recommend that one for this time of year. Okay, the next question says, the nights are getting darker. Nights are always dark. <laughs> Just saying. But the question is, share a dark, creepy read. So for this one, I'm going to share what I think. I mean, I've read a lot of thrillers, and a lot of them are very disturbing. But I think this one is the one that will stick with me forever as being like the scariest book I've read in my life. And that is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. This book is terrifying, but I guess not everybody's as much of a scaredy cat as me. But like the ending of this book is really scary. I've never read a book that like, I don't want to keep saying scared, but it did. It scared me. I was really scared. <laughs> Yeah, the descriptive words are coming easy today. But I really liked the whole book leading up to it. It was very, like, the whole book wasn't a horror book. It was just suspenseful. And then the ending was terrifying. And they're making it into a movie. I don't know if, it probably won't come out now, thanks COVID, but I'll watch it someday. Oh, and anything by Riley Sager. His books are very, very scary, but also they're not scary. They're suspenseful and they're atmospheric, which is another good recommendation for this time of year. And I've heard his new one is actually pretty scary. So I'll be reading that soon. The next question is, the days are getting colder. Name a short but heartwarming book that could warm up anybody's cold and rainy day. So for this one, I'm choosing The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. I had a different answer, but then when I was rereading this question... This book just like came to me. So it must be the book gods telling me to talk about this book. Even though I honestly don't remember it super well, it was a very, like I specifically remember thinking, this is a heartwarming book. And any book can be short if you read it fast enough, right? So I recommend this one is one that will make your heart happy, I think. I'm pretty sure. Unless something tragic happened that I'm forgetting. But I'm pretty sure it's a good one if you want something that's just cozy. Okay, the next question says, fall returns every year. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to. So I have Harry Potter for this one, which I think to myself every year, this would be a good time to reread Harry, re -read Harry Potter. And I never reread it. So I'd like to, <laughs> but I don't think that's happening. This is the last question. Fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Name some of your favorite cozy reading accessories. So I'm just going to be basic here and say fuzzy socks, cozy blankets, um, snacks. I really love hot Cheetos, which I haven't had in a really long time. I could go for some hot Cheetos. What else? <laughs> now I'm just thinking about hot Cheetos. Oh, yeah. This is a good tip. Um, if you don't have a fireplace, which most people don't, you can turn Netflix on your TV, which most people do have. And there's a fireplace, like, it's not a show, it's just like a fireplace that comes up on your TV and then it makes like crackling noises and it looks so cozy and warm and I am not the type of person that can listen to music while I read. I just can't. I need like relative silence. So this makes it so cozy. Oh my gosh, I want to do this now. Okay, I'm going to go do that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
I would really like to know if anybody doesn't like fall because we all know that pretty much everybody doesn't or everybody does like fall. So if you don't um, reveal yourself, out yourself as the anomaly that you are <laughs> and we'll shame you. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>